What if I were to tell you that for one and a half thousand euros or 1,250 pounds, you could buy a genuinely cool, soon to be appreciating classic, go anywhere, do anything adventure bike. Do you think I'm crazy? Absolutely not. This is the 1987 to 2000 model, 600cc Honda Trans Alp. Every time I look at these bikes in this era of Japanese motorcycles, I cannot help but think these are the next big thing to happen. See, these bikes came along when Japan ruled the roads. And not only did they rule the roads, they ruled the off-road as well. Because in 1982, 1986, 87, 88 and 99, Honda also won the Paris-Dakar Rally. So on the back, of the 1982 success of the winning Dakar rally with a Honda motorcycle, Honda decided in 1985 to start developing an all-purpose, do-everything motorcycle. Two years later, in 1987, they had launched this, the Trans Alp. This is a bike that was designed for everyone to do everything, a bike that was made to be your one and only motorcycle. Before I do a full walk around of this bike, there are four important dates to remember. Number one, it came out originally in 1987. Number two, in 1995, production moved from Japan to Italy. So up until 95, every single Transalp was built in Japan. From 1995 onwards, all of them were built in Italy. From the year 2000, the 600cc engine became a 650, and finally in 2005, up until the death of the Trans Alp in 2012, every single bike was made in Spain. Now, it's a strangely brilliant mix of a sports tourer, an adventure bike, and a trails bike. What we've got is Suspension with really quite a lot of movement, which is brilliant for off-roading. We've got a fully fared, big, classic 1980s plastic front fender to protect, just in the way that you get from a sports tourer. We have, and if you come around here, Monica, I think you'll be okay with the road. Very good ground clearance for off-road riding with a skid plate as well to protect the front from any off-roading and rocks that hit, along with a high exhaust as well, in case you want to get into any wet situations, cross some rivers. So this really is, just by the looks of things, a bike that can go absolutely everywhere. Now I'm six foot one, with a very nice bend in my legs. The bike in question, and this is an interesting bit. This bike in question is a 1990s model. So that means it's Japanese built. It's got 55 horsepower. It's 202 kilos. It's carburetted and it's liquid cooled. One quirky fact, if you're looking at these online, traditionally they're 50 horsepower motorcycles. However, in the years 1989 and 1990, they increased the horsepower by 10%. So this specific model in 1989 and 1990 is actually as standard a 55 horsepower motorcycle. It is incredibly comfortable with zero weight over my, over my wrists, over my shoulder. And the pillion, pillion comfort is well, that's just about as comfortable as I've ever experienced. The bend in my leg is perfect. The seat is actually wider for the pillion than it is for the rider itself. And I could sit here all day in comfort. Forget about it being a new or old bike. This is a very, very comfortable motorcycle full stop. The Transalp was never built. It was never made to be a range topping motorcycle. It was built to be the most efficient tool for the job possible. A huge, huge reputation for reliability with this engine. It's meant to be absolutely bulletproof and the bike itself, with its rugged nature, had such a reputation that it was the bike of choice for the Greek police, the British police and the Dutch police.
it's still, you know, it's amazing that this came out 35 years ago and it's still, even now, a fantastic, fantastic bike to ride, both both on and off road, and I really do mean that. On the motorways, it is just all day comfort. It's a mile muncher. It can be a continent crusher, this bike. And then you get to the off roading and that soft suspension and the big ground clearance. It really does mean that for a novice off roader who's extremely enthusiastic like myself, you can have a gigantic amount of fun without worrying too much about the bike itself. It's very manageable, the weight is low down, the seat height isn't unpleasantly high and it just all feels very manageable. And in that 600cc 55 horsepower format, it just means that it's never too much horsepower where you're going to be unnecessarily spinning out the wheels when you're off-roading, for example. And, you know, if you compare it to the likes of a, a Triumph Scrambler 1200, something like this, for off-roading, this is every bit as good. And I really do mean it. If you're pushing the bends and attacking now, going from left to right, you can feel the softness of the suspension. It is a little bit wallowy a wallowy by today's standards, but it doesn't mean it's not fun. This, 35 years on, is still a very, very relevant bike and it can still be, even now, the only mode of transport. Let me show you what I see. So, the dash itself, it's almost car-like. You've got the Speedo on the left-hand side, the rev counter on the right, and just four lights. Of course, this is way, way before anything like ABS and this. That is about the most worn key I've seen. So worn actually that the owner of this bike has to attach this to it because the key actually does fall out, it's so worn. I think it's just gone round the clock once. So that would be 100,000 kilometers on this bike. And honestly, it's a testament to Honda build quality. 100,000 kilometers on this bike, it's 32 years old and it still feels like a very, very relevant, very usable everyday motorcycle. This bike, and you may guess by the name, it was designed for Europeans, or with Europeans in mind. The Transalp, it was built to cross the Alps, whether it be the autostradas or the off-roading sections or the tight winding roads. It was designed for Wolfgang in the Black Forest in Germany to commute to work. It was designed for Pierluigi in Italy to enjoy those glorious winding Italian roads. And it was designed for Pierre the architect in Paris to be able to head out of the city on the weekends and enjoy some touring around Europe. And I completely get it. In every single situation we've been in, whether it's off-roading, whether it's riding through the city or the towns of Tenerife, or whether it is on the motorways, it makes perfect sense everywhere. It doesn't necessarily excel anywhere. I mean, when you're on roads like this now, that wallowy suspension that I mentioned, that is very apparent. And the brakes themselves, oh, they're only just good enough. But, but things like, or things that you don't often immediately realize, it has the best turning circle I have ever experienced on any bike. I can maneuver twice as fast, for example, on the Bonneville. So in town situations, whether that's squeezing in and out of traffic or parking up, 
incredibly, incredibly practical motorcycle. The Trans Alp, it was a huge sales success. To put this into some perspective, in 1994, Triumph sold roughly 10,000 motorcycles worldwide. But in the first six months of the Trans Alp going on sale, it sold 10,000 models. And by the early 1990s, in France and Italy alone, it was shifting 7,000 models. By the mid-1990s, there were 60,000 trans Alps happily whizzing around the streets of continental Europe. If you now go on to, if you're British or American, go on to eBay, go on to Auto Trader, go on to Gumtree, go anywhere, have a look and see how cheap these are, and you'll be surprised. They don't exist. Because in the same time that continental Europe were lapping up these motorcycles, between 1987 and 1994, we Brits bought 800 of them. We hated them. We had no interest in them. If it wasn't a super sports Japanese motorcycle that we could look like a Power Ranger on, we had no interest in it. It had to be the lariest, most extreme, most focused motorcycle for us Brits to have any interest in it at the time. So we had exactly zero interest in this motorcycle. I checked online. At the time of recording this, the current total of these bikes for sale in the UK, one. Just one of the original 600cc carburetted engines for sale in the UK. And if you're in the USA and also wondering, and you're wondering where are they? Where are all the Trans Alps? Well, it's a similar story because the Trans Alp was only sold in the USA from 1989 to 1981 or to 1991 because in the US they just couldn't get their head around the fact that this was a do-it-all bike. Either it had to be a hardcore cruiser Harley or it needed to be a sports bike. So much like the Brits, they just couldn't get their head around it in the US and sales buckled and it was of so little interest in the USA that they actually ended up pulling it just two years later. I did a check online how many of the original 600cc Trans Alps are currently still in existence in the UK. That is from 1987 up until 1999 when it was the original 600cc carburetted engine. There are 142 still left in existence and of those 142, over half of them are now off the road and tucked up in people's garages. That means there are roughly 60, 60 of these motorcycles on the roads currently in the UK. Now, if you look at this compared to modern day versions, the Suzuki V Strom 650, that's 8,000 pounds, it's 213 kilos and it's 70 horsepower. So this is 13 kilos or so lighter than the V Strom. It loses out in about 15 horsepower. This does about 46 miles per gallon for economy and the V-Strom is around about 54 mpg, so it loses out in about 9 mpg, but it's not a million miles off. Look at it compared to the Honda 500X 
And that's a bike with a 500cc engine that's around about 46 horsepower, so with around about 200 kilos there or thereabouts. So it's, it's not a million miles off the modern day equivalent motorcycles. But if you look at it compared to the Africa Twin of the same era, early 1990s, something like that, the Africa Twins command twice, twice the premium of this, the Transalp. But I actually think, I think it's growing into its looks. I really think this is a very handsome, understated motorcycle. And I think we're just, just on the brink now of this starting to be a more desirable future classic. Or are we actually now into the realms of this being an actual classic motorcycle? Because prices and values have and it is very slight, it hasn't taken off completely, but they have started to tick up with this bike. If you're looking for one of these, and you're a Brit, you need to go to continental Europe. You need to be looking at Germany, Italy, France, and countries like that, because still, you can pick up a decent condition Transalp for under, you'd be lucky, but let's just say one and a half thousand euros. If you're lucky, a tiny bit under, I know that the Swedish owner banked of this motorcycle in Tenerife, and this is a Tenerife bike that we think has been here all of its life. He picked it up for 1,200 euros. 1,200 euros for this much bike. But, you know, go to Germany, go to Italy and France, you get one for one and a half thousand euros, and that is a lot of bike for such a cheap amount of money. This unassuming workhorse, in my mind, is significantly undervalued. And if you are looking for one of these, see if you can pick out one just like this 1990 model. See if you can get a 1987 to 1994 Japanese built 600cc, one of the original ones, because there really is only one way prices of these are going. And rumor has it that Honda is soon to bring back the Transalp name and not just in Europe but also they've reserved the rights to the name Transalp in the USA as well so there's a very good chance they're going to bring this back mass market and if they do there really is only one way these prices are going you can still do everything on this bike it makes sense even in 2022 as your one and only bike buy it go to Mongolia on it fling panniers over the top of it and head off for a weekend away rinse it down again go with your partner to a coffee shop just enjoy it use it as a winter hack it can do everything and it will do everything without any kind of complaints at all and the reason i love i just love bikes like this so much and when i was walking there today down into a little town in or on the east coast of tenerife and i saw this parked outside glistening away the reason i get so excited for bikes like this is it opens up biking to absolutely everyone this is honda reliability with 1980s style, rock solid residuals where you won't lose a penny, and a bike that can take you anywhere in the world. It opens up adventure biking and genuine ex exploration travel on two wheels for the masses for 1,500 euros. This is a bike that's attainable for everyone, and I love it for that. Any owners, past and present, of the Honda Transalp, I'm fascinated to hear. Let me know your thoughts on the bike, uh, any fun little stories about it. I would love to hear all of them. And 
what is the competition for this bike? Let me know any other bikes around about this era that you think are as good as, or maybe even better, the Trans Alp. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Right, I'm now going to head off to, probably to Little, and pick up some banana wine for Bangt, the Swedish owner of this beautiful motorcycle, to thank him for lending it to me for the day. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming along. Please do give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you in the next one.